So, um, yeah, so, well, I'm trading my sorrows and I'm trading my shame for the joy of the Lord. And this morning, Jim has asked me to speak about mental health, and it's a massive subject, so I'm just going to keep it very simple, because, um, yeah, there's, there's a lot I could say, <laughs> um, but anyway, um, so basically that song has been very special to us over the last few weeks, because that's the choice we get with Jesus. As we come into that deeper relationship with him, we can trade our sorrows for the joy of the Lord. We can trade our shame. We can trade our anger but it, you know, for the joy of the Lord. And it takes time. It sometimes you know, things happen in an instant. Other times they take longer. But that's his heart's desire for each one of you, for everybody. So, yeah, my, I said, well, you know my name's Maria. Um, and um, so, yeah, I've been um, Christian counselling now for about 14 years. Um, and also, um, I've, uh, I, I um, work for a deep inner healing ministry. Um, so, um, so, yeah, so I've, there's been, you know, I've had a lot of experience, which has really blessed me. I learn so much from my clients. And it's, it's been a journey. For me, it's been a journey into God's heart. And so I just want to share a little bit of that with you this morning and hopefully, hopefully encourage you and bless you to step in further to his heart. Because I found in my life, it's not knowing him in my intellect, it's knowing him in my heart. And once I know I'm loved, and I know, Jim, you talk about this a long time, uh, not a long time, but a lot of the time, um, and it really, really is all about that. It's very simple, but it's very hard, too, because there might be stuff you have to clear out. Um, because I didn't think of, when I started my journey, God was definitely not a loving God. So there's a lot of stuff that I had to get rid of with him. But he helped me and he enabled me. Um, so yeah, mental health is a big subject. It's very topical at the moment, isn't it? Mental health crisis in our society. Um, reports suggest an alarming level of mental health issues in England. The charity mind state that one in four people will experience a common mental health problem like anxiety or depression. And those figures suggest that I'm speaking to eight, p eight or ten people in this room right now. It's, it's shocking, isn't it? So what do we mean when we speak of mental health? Just very, very simply, we all have varying degrees of mental health. All of us. In the same way, um, you know, varying degrees of physical health. So, very simply, it's the condition of our minds and our psychological well-being. And mental illness will affect our mental health just as physical illness affects our physical health and vice versa. Um, so, yeah, um, so I hope in this short time I can explain why I think we need to invite God into every part of us, into our minds, into our hearts, into our bodies, our emotions and our spirits. Because um, I have found in my life that's where the really, really deep healing comes. So, as we all know here, external and internal factors affect our mental health and we've certainly been through a lot haven't we of external issues recently the COVID pandemic and now the cost of living crisis continuous changes in the leadership of our government <laughs> and the global climate crisis and the war in Ukraine so a lot to make us concerned about the future for ourselves for our children and now I've got grandchildren, our grandchildren. 
and also loss of loved ones or the worry that something will happen to them. And that was a big thing in my life because my sister was very ill and died when I was in my mid-30s. Um, so that always, when I had children, I found that quite worrying. Um, unemployment and redundancy. If you lose your job, and that happens to a lot of people, doesn't it, continually, job for life, a bit tricky today, um, you may think of yourself as being a failure. Money worries, and particularly now, and especially true at Christmas time. And last week, I really, really sadly heard about a, a guy who had five kids. He was so worried he didn't have enough money um, to supply all his family need for Christmas that he killed himself. So, and, you know, they'd much rather have him than a present. Um, yeah, marital problems, divorce, loneliness. And that's been a biggie, hasn't it? With the COVID pandemic and since it. And I, and I, I don't want to depress you. I read of a woman who'd been dead for a year in her flat and nobody knew. Um, and childhood trauma and other life traumas as we journey through life. So, so basically, we're all, we're all affected, aren't we? We've got a lot in common. A lot in common because life isn't easy. They are, there are challenges. And I tell you, it's much better when Jesus is with you as your guide and your leader and your father. And if I just share a little bit. Um, so I, I grew up... Um, in an abusive home and I left home at 17 and I thought I really really I firmly believed and not one of you could tell me any different that my life began at 17 and anything in the past had gone and it would never trouble me again unfortunately I found it doesn't work like that and um, when I had my yep yeah, oh thank you Jim <laughs> That's what, that's what I was like. I just want you to see that picture. That's what I kept doing. Um, I did it when I was 28, when I had my first baby. And it all started coming forward. I thought, no, nope, I'm not going to look at it. I did it again at 30. And then when I had my third child, I thought, oh my goodness, what's going to happen this time? But I made up in my head, mind that I was going to start talking about it. And, um, and the dam just burst. I literally... I couldn't, I couldn't push it back. I couldn't stop it. So, um, yeah, and I was really, really fortunate uh, to have a lovely woman that walked alongside me for five and a half years, it was, and she was brilliant. She was just so kind and caring. And I was really frightened. I don't know about anyone else, but I was really frightened about opening up about what went on in me because I thought I was going to be judged. And also, I had had critical comments about things, and I was very sensitive, but this lady, she just sat quietly with me, and she, was, she listened, and she wept with me, and she, she was just lovely. Um, so that went on for a while, and then once that had all come to an end, I then went on an alpha course um, back in 98, and that transformed my life. My husband dragged me to it because I'd said I'd, I'd gone to a Catholic school and I knew my Bible, all that stuff. And I said, oh, I don't, I don't need that. I've just had so much. And Simon said, I'm not doing it unless you come with me. And I thought, all right then. So I went down the road and I praise God that he got me there because I really learned what the Holy Spirit, who the Holy Spirit is. I was scared stiff of the Holy Spirit because I was brought up with him being the Holy Ghost. And, and for me, it was like a haunting. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that transformed my life. And then it's just been a continuous journey. I literally thought, I don't make you laugh, but I, I can't tell you, you'll probably think I'm daft. But when I went into my the psychotherapist, I said, how long is this going to take? And she, she just looked at me. And, I, and, and we looked at each other, and I said to her, Two weeks. I said, two weeks, and then I will come out completely free. Well, she just sat and looked at me and never said a word. And I went, oh, 
I said, um, I said, three. She just kept looking at me. And I got to eight weeks and she still hadn't said a word. And I, and I was at eight weeks and I thought, where do I go from here? And, uh, and then she finally she said, she just said, as long as it takes. I was so disappointed. I really was. I sat there in shock. I was mega disappointed. What I didn't appreciate is that basically it is a lifelong daily journey. You do get, you do get moments, you get mountain tops, wonderful, where you feel like it's all dealt with. And then all of a sudden, that month or a little while later, something else pops up. Um, but it's never as bad. What I wanted to do encourage you, it is never, ever as bad, uh, I found. When you first start, it feels like that damn going, and then it gets easier. And it's much better. And if you've got the right people with you, leading you, guiding you, loving you, caring about you, it makes all the difference. Um, so, but what I learned was that we have to be very, very careful. Um, it wasn't only um, revisiting traumatic memories. Jesus giving me the most wonderful pictures so I remember what he showed me rather than what happened. And that's, um, but it's the things we tell ourselves. We do, we can speak very unkindly to ourselves. And we can even, you know, we can read the Bible and, um, well, I did. I saw God as a um, judgmental. Uh, point the finger, really strict with me. And I must admit, I was a bit cross with him. I said, poor Jesus, look at the suffering he had. And you sat up in heaven and you left him to it. And, you know, that was quite a shock for me when I realised what I was believing. And it explained why God was so far away from me. Why, why, sorry, he wasn't far away. I felt he was far away. Once I got that cleared up, um, it made it easier um, to accept him be lo loving me, um, well, being Jesus, to, being like Jesus. So I look at Jesus, I see God. And God is my daddy. And Jesus is my daddy. And, and I can relate to the Holy Spirit. I cleared up all that stuff about him being like a ghost. So that, that was a relief. Um, but I think it's what we say to ourselves and it's what we keep inside. You know, when I, when I, I, have a, I had a lovely boss who's just recently died and, um, and she, she called traumas, life traumas, life quakes. And I thought, yeah, they're just like an earthquake. They, it, it happens. You are in shock. You will feel all sorts of emotions. And then as the main event calms down, there's still tremors. There are tremors. And it will feel, to say to you, it will feel that God is not with you. Because you're going to be in shock, you're going to be in trauma, you're going to be numb. So it's not that you're faithless. We have to be very careful about that as Christians. Um, because I, over the years I've met quite a few who just smile, yeah I'm fine, and oh no, the joy of the Lord, and it, oh he brings you know um, everything together for good, and you just want to hit them. Because you know it's not like that. <laughs> So I think, you know, we are human. We are human. We are not God. But he enables us. He equips us. He strengthens us. And he, he gets us going, you know. And you can, I've, I've learned, um, I had a lot of anger locked inside me. A lot. And um, that would surprise people because I guess they didn't think, it might not surprise my family, but they didn't think of me as an angry person. And I thought, what am I going to do? And my kids were all quite young when all this stuff was coming out. And I thought, oh my goodness, I don't want to hurt them. What am I going to do? And so um, and my husband, and Simon was out at work, so I'd get into bed about 7 o'clock in the evening. And I bought, in those days, really cheap eggs. And I got two dozen eggs for 70p. And I got them all to bed and I went into my back garden and I had a bush growing up against one of the walls and nobody could see me. My neighbours couldn't see me. Well, I hope they didn't. And it was dark and I took the eggs 
and I literally threw them at the wall and I said all sorts of things <laughs> that I won't repeat now um, as I threw them. And, and I, I did it, I have to say, I did it for quite a few months. Um, not every night, but regularly, until eventually I felt all that had festered in here, I had to do something physically. For me, it's all different, it's all different. People like to dig the garden. I don't find digging the garden helpful. It just hurts my back. So I don't do that. Um, so anyway, it just, you know, some people like running. Well, I do like running, but I don't use it to, well, it releases some tension. Um, but anyway, the, the really funny thing was, so I got through this, so then eventually we had our fourth, fourth child and we moved house. Well, years later, I was in town and this lady, um, I met the woman who had bought the previous house and she came up to me and she said, she said, you know that bush at the back, she said, it's growing so well, it's lovely. And I just smiled, I, I in inwardly smiled. I thought, yeah, those eggs bless the bush <laughs> and bless me too. So, yeah, so I, I just think, I just learned, you know, he's not a judgmental, he's not a pointy finger, and he just loves. And I think I just want to encourage you, if you've ever come across the Passion Translation, it's more an interpretation than a real literal translation, but it is so good at sharing the love of God. So if you've never read that and you want to get more of the love of God, I recommend that translation to you. He says in there, you know, I love Psalm 23, and he says about the good shepherd, but he calls him your best friend. And I just say, oh, he's a good shepherd, and he's a best friend. And Oh, best friends are loyal, aren't they? And they really care for you, and they want the best for you, and they will tell you when you're misbehaving as well, in a good way. <laughs> not, not in an unkind way, as my husband will tell me sometimes when I get out of hand. <laughs> so, and you know, I wanna, I just, when I was preparing this talk, I just, wanted, I just thought about the um, disciple Thomas. And... Um, I was saying, I don't know why I need to mention that, but he doubted God, didn't he? He really doubted. And yet God didn't, do you know, God understood. I, I see God, God didn't, you know, you wicked man. And he just said, come here, Thomas, come here, come here. See these, see these wounds. Put your fingers in them. He didn't, you know, he didn't chastise him and make a fool of him in front of everyone because of what he thought. He understood and I think, actually, this, the lovely lady that's just died, if she, had, if she suddenly resurrected from the dead, I think I'd be a bit shocked. And how would I receive it? And actually, I might doubt it too. But God said, no, just, just come to me and see my wounds. And then, and then he just, he says it, he just says, and stop doubting and believe. But I don't see that as a harsh comment. I just see him saying that because he knows what's best for Thomas and for all of us. And I just wonder if there's somebody here, I just thought, as you're listening to this, I was just thinking, maybe it's time for you to stop doubting and believe. And he's not saying that unkindly to you. He's saying it because he knows, he knows what's best for you. He knows what's best for me than I know myself. And I, and I often go into prayer with what I think I want to talk about or pray about, and I end up talking about something else, or praying about something else. And I just think about the woman at the well, and how she was an outcast, wasn't she, in her society, and judged. He didn't do that to her. He, he invited her to drink, to drink from him. And so, Jim, we've got the Rose of Jericho. I just want to show you this. This is what happens, I think, when we really let Jesus into our lives.
Thank you. So it's yeah, it's the do you see what when when the when it gets watered, it's a um, it's a rose of Jericho and it stays all crunched up and lifeless in the desert. It can survive like that for ninety years. Just like we can. Just like we can. We can survive, can't we? All closed up. No, don't want to talk about it. And just keep it all here. And then the moment it gets watered, it, open, it opens out. So, yes, I just want to think, just for you to think about that for a moment. Because Jesus provides that living water. He gives us all we need if if we let him. It's a choice. It is a choice. He's not going to force himself upon you. And he's so gentle. And he does it at your pace. And it just reminds me, I'm just thinking too, about the woman caught in adultery. And how she was going to be stoned, wasn't she, by her community. And he came along and he was the only one. He just didn't he let the first, let the one without sin cast the first stone. He was the only one. He was the only one without sin, and he didn't throw a stone. So he doesn't throw stones at us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wants you to have life, and he wants you to have it in all its fullness. And it doesn't mean things will be easy. There will be challenges. Like I said, we all have challenges. And we're human beings and we will feel things. And we won't feel emotions that are good. You know? We'll be a whole variety of emotions. But he just says, come. He says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And he says, learn from me. And, and I think that's the key thing. Learn from him. Okay, experience teaches us things. But, you know, don't let fear rob you. Don't let anger rob you. Don't let unforgiveness rob you. That's a biggie. I found that so hard. It took me, I'm not joking, it took me two and a half years to forgive my mum. It was a biggie. And then I made the big mistake. I went to her and said, I forgive you. And, she, and, I, and I know now you don't do that. I le- and she just said, but, but nothing. What, what, what do I need to be forgiven for? I've done nothing. I was absolutely astounded. And she just looked at me and, and I, I said, what, what about... And she said, oh dear, that's you. You're just being too sensitive. And that mega threw me. And I think it took me about another two years to get over it. (laughs) I was so angry. Um, But that's the wonderful thing about Jesus. All you do is go to him. And he completely forgives you for everything. And just wants you to start again. So yeah, come to him and learn from him. Don't, as I say, don't learn from all those negative emotions which can paralyse you. And, um, yeah, I was just, I think I've lost my way a bit, but, um, yeah, he was, he's just, you know, he's just waiting. He's a faithful God. He'll never leave you. He'll never, ever, ever give up on you. I say, thank goodness. Sometimes we can say, oh my God, once I say yes, you know, he's with me always. Um, But it's just growing into that deeper knowledge of him. And basically, we're not meant to be self-reliant. And I I really had to learn that in a big way. And I think that's something society, education, and um, it brings to mind a chap I met on Friday. And um, I had a a taxi journey um, on Friday. And this taxi man, he was lovely, he was really friendly. He was so proud of himself. He said to me, I am strong. I do not need anybody or anything to help me because I can do it on my own. And I, I thought, and he was telling me about his past. 
And so I said, well, um, I said, I think, yeah, we've got similar paths, actually. But um, actually, I found I needed to get to know Jesus. And he said, no, he said, I am strong. And, I, and at one point, that would have thrown me, because I thought, oh, Marie, you're so weak. <gasps> you know, you can't do it on your own, because I really thought you had to. Had to. And, um, but actually, I've learned when I'm weak, he is strong. And I have to say, I have to tell you, um, I was working away last week at a prayer counselling um, conference, and um, they said, what is the worst thing? What is the worst fear? What is the worst thing for you? Ask Jesus. Ask Jesus, what is it? And it flashed into my mind, and I said, I just instantly came to it, and I said, being seen. Literally, that is the worst thing for me. So it's only, I have to say, it really is only because of Jesus that I can stand here in front of you. I never thought in my life I would end up doing anything like this. I, I thought it was safer to hide, and actually it was jolly boring. Um, you know, it feels safe. Fear feels safe. It feels, oh, I can be safe over there. But then you don't get to do much. And although you might make a fool of yourself or, um, I don't know, say something wrong, because um, I'm no great theologian, um, God doesn't want that for you. He wants you to have a go, you know? And he wants, he wants you to get to know him so that he, well, he knows everything about you anyway, but he really wants to get to know you. And he so wants to be close to you. And he so, so wants to help you with everything, with everything. So I'm going to end. You might already know this clip. Um, so, uh, Jim, I think I've, yeah. Oh uh-huh. 
I don't know how many times I see that, always, oh my goodness, so will you let him, will you let him help you finish your race, will you let him give you that life in all its fullness, whatever's going on, whatever challenges, and I brought two lovely, lovely people from our community, and they've been praying all service, and they've got some words of knowledge, so Barbara and Anne, you'd like to come forward and it would be lovely to offer prayer. Will you let God love you?